Hello, um, I wanted to show you your resource page for the climate change uh, unit. So this is how it looks so far. These are the resources that we think will be the best for you for this project. You need to use scholarly sources and so you're definitely going to look at the things in this box here um, and we'll talk about those in a minute. You may also choose to look inside any of these magazines. These are all science magazines. You can look individually by clicking these links, or you can also do a Google custom search. Anything you put in that box will search for all of the articles in any of those magazines at the same time. Underneath here, I put some websites that have some good articles that give you overviews of uh, possible solutions for climate change. So that might be also a good starting point. In addition, to help your searching overall, um, I've put here a little box around keyword searching with just a reminder about using quotation marks to keep phrases together. And then your teachers have compiled a word bank where you can use any of these terms alone or in combination to find resources. Down below, there's uh, the Bulify search puzzle, which helps you to narrow um, and get a good Google search. And there's a video here about how to use Bulify if you have not used it before. But this video is really going to be about Gale. So when you open up Gale Science in Context here, it will show like this. You'll have to put in the password, FDRLib. Um, and then after you put in the password, it opens up like this. And I always recommend that you go to the Browse Topics area down here. And you're going to be looking in the Earth and Environmental Science area. And when you open that up, it's going to come to a huge list of topics. As you start doing your research, you may find that you want to go back and see some of these particular topics based on your focus. But for now, I'm going to recommend choosing this one, Global Warming and Climate Change. And when you open that up, it will show like this. This is the general page for that topic, and it always starts with an overview article. And when we open that up, we'll see a longer article that we will skim and scan. I think I have it here. It's a longer article that you're going to skim and scan to get a sense of some of the issues, um, the subtopics, the, the areas that you might search for in more depth. So I always recommend looking at the overview article. Once you have a sense of the topic, the overview, then you can go in and do a little bit more narrowing. So the way that Science in Context is organized, you see all the different sources by category. So here we have their featured content, those are like the new hot topics, reference, those are kind of straight facts, experiments and so forth, videos, audio, these are podcasts and radio shows, they're excellent. Academic journals, I would steer clear of unless you have a very high understanding because they tend to be very difficult. You can see here they're level five reading. In the news, newspaper articles, that is good for you, and of course, magazines. Now you'll be able to see, and there's some good websites there too, you'll be able to see exactly how many articles are in each type because it will tell you here. So we've got 3,000 magazines. Fine, I want to see a magazine, so let me click on all of those 3,000. Now I'm going to do my narrowing down. I'm going to look here on filter results and I like to choose this one, which is called Search Within. Search Within means I'm going to put a term and it's going to find me inside of the magazines area the term that I want. So let me pop back over to my guide and see some of the terms my teacher has recommended. I'm going to choose this one, Alternative Energy. I'm taking the quotation marks and everything. And I'm going to search within. 
magazines for alternative energy. And I'm down to 55. 55 magazines from 300 something. That looks good. I'm going to have a quick look, but that still is kind of a lot. I'm going to search within again. And this time I'm going to look at efficiency. Whoops. And I'm going to take that word efficiency and search within my 55 results. And now, alternative energy and efficiency in magazines, I'm getting down to a number that I can skim each of those results and see what I have. This one looks interesting. I can see it's a level three read, which is probably good for me as I'm just starting out. And when I open it up, I can skim and scan and decide, okay, yes, I really want it. Now, if I really want it, I have some tools that can help me keep track of my work. So I can send it directly to my Google Drive. I can, of course, click the P up here and put it in my paper pile account. And I can also do some highlighting and note taking right from inside the database. So I can highlight something, a particular color. I can take a note here. And whatever I do with my highlighting and my notes, it will save inside here in my work session. When I'm done working with this, I will want to download all of my notes so that they will be saved in my drive. You can also do this kind of thing in paper pile instead. The other thing I want to be sure that I get while I'm here is the citation. I'm going to choose APA. APA citation for science is what we're asking for. That means that the date will be close to the title or the author. So there you can see the date. You'll notice the difference here. MLA puts the date farther away. Okay, so once I have the APA selected, I can send it to my drive, I can copy it and paste it into a doc, I can do whatever I want with it because I know it's already formatted properly. Um, I believe that's the main thing to tell you about Gale. Um, I've already, you, you can see here, this is the exact article I was looking at. I've put it in my paper pile account using the little P on my Chrome bar. Um, if it's not complete, like see here it says incomplete when I put it in, it's okay. I'm going to edit and then I can fill in this information with whatever I might need. Um, I already got an excellent citation for this particular one, so I might not bother, but it's just for you to make sure that you're aware if it says incomplete here, and you ask Paperpile to make all of the citations for you, it won't do it properly because it's incomplete. So you can get the citation from the database directly um, if it's available. If not, then you're going to fill it in on your own. Alrighty, so that is just a little bit about how to use um, Science in Context, which is an excellent resource for this project. Um, Twig videos, I believe you know how to use those already. I, I have it linked here so that it will open up to videos for this particular topic. And then you've got your other resources down below. Thanks very much. I hope you have good luck. And if not, let me know and I can help you.